He is undoubtedly and incomparably the top legal mind of the country. With over seven decades in the Supreme Court behind him, he has seen many judges and many chief justices come and go. We are honored to be joined by a legal voice like none other, Mr. Fali Naraman. Thank you so much for speaking to India today. Sir, uh, you have recently come out with your opinion uh, regarding the elevation, rather non-elevation of Justice S. Murlidhar, who was one of the top best high court judges that the country has seen, who was not brought to the Supreme Court. What was the reason for you to ask this question of the Supreme Court regarding Justice Murlidhar's elevation? It was not, not to bring uh, the Supreme Court into a bad light. That was not the intention. The intention was to give a wider perspective to this method of appointing judges or not appointing judges from the High Courts to the Supreme Court. And because that has been always a source of complaint, of anguish of various people. But let me go back to the beginning. You see, it was 35 years ago when the United Nations set out a set of basic principles for the independence of the judiciary. It was decided by the General Assembly unanimously, there was no dissent at all. And they said, every country has to make its own constitution and decide yeah. according to its constitution what the position should be. But there are some minimum requirements. And the minimum requirement is that there should be a judiciary which is independent, decides independently, and manned by persons of integrity. Now, we have fulfilled all those norms. There is no doubt about it in our constitution. The article itself says. But in order to safeguard the question as to how people should be appointed, everywhere in the world, they are only appointed by the executive, whether you like it or not. But it has to be in consultation with the Chief Justice. Is the question on the independence of the judiciary itself at this point? At, at, the, at the moment, yes, the way it has worked out. Hmm. You see, each country has its own background. Hmm. Each country has its own background, how it has worked out. In the first 10 years or 15 years of uh, the Constitution, there was no difficulty. Hmm. In fact, statistics show that almost in all cases except one or two, uh, the, the opinion of the Chief Justice of India, and that was the only requirement, the opinion of Chief Justice of India should be final. Mm. And that happened to be the, the practice right through for about 10 to four, 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 years. Mm. But then came the judgment in uh, one of the judges' cases where by a majority they decided that according to the text of the Constitution, <laughs> it said it consultation with the Chief Justice. It doesn't mean with the concurrence of the Chief Justice. Correct. And that was the controversy. Hmm. So by a majority of four to three, they said that, no, it is the executive which will appoint. Right. And without, whether in consultation, but not certainly not with concurrence. No. And then, then the trouble that arose was, as you know, over the next 10 years, 20 years, that judges were appointed, that the executive then assumed it, that it was entitled to appoint whomsoever they please, right. which became another problem. But the trouble that was happening at that time, the dissatisfaction amongst the judiciary and the government was also because the judiciary was trying to be fiercely independent. Yes. And they were trying to ensure that the judges that they re Absolutely, recommend... Absolutely, because that is in consonance with the United Nations Correct. general principle. Correct. Correct. So what is the situation that's different now, do you think? No, you see, what is different now is that there was, having regard to the background, we had a judgment of nine judges which said, ultimately, that no, the ultimate choice of the person to be appointed, whether as a High Court judge, person to be transferred from a High Court judge from one High Court to another, person to be appointed a Supreme Court judge, would be ultimately decided in consultation with government, but the ultimate choice will have to be not by the chief, not of the Chief Justice, but of three, the first three judges of the Supreme Court. But, which was later altered to the first five. Right. But what do the judges do? 
when the government just sits on the recommendations endlessly i mean earlier also regarding certain high court judges we saw that recommendations were made they reiterated them they gave out very detailed collegium resolutions but the government just did not move you see this happens this has happened on two occasions with two separate government it has happened with the congress government it has happened with the bjp uh, the, uh, the uh, nj's d government and again with the super majority bjp government no no difficulty at all they all behave in the same way hmm. they, generally they do follow generally they do follow but not always but now the the present uh, interview and the present uh, arises because of that article which appeared yesterday or the day before right and and and, and that article only goes to show that sometimes this happens it's a rare case but it's a very important case a man who is of outstanding ability who is overlooked not only overlooked uh, as uh, when he retires at 62 but a lot of other people who are a great appointed to the highest court and this man is left out right without any explanation at all now whether there should be an explanation there should not be an explanation to whom should that explanation be given these are all matters to be thought of they are all matters to be debated it's not as if one is uh, one is uh, carping at uh, the supreme court decision uh, they, they they have to consider this but my own view has always been that it is not the job of judges to judge judges it is a job of judges to judge cases okay. and they do it pretty well in our country they have done it pretty well for last 70 odd years with a few exceptions here and there but they have all been get caught ironed out from court to court so i i i still personally feel that there should be a national commission hmm. for appointment of judges hmm. and for transfer of judges but 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 the the, the, the dominant voice should be Of with the uh, with uh, with the three senior most or five senior most judges of the supreme court it can't be otherwise and that is why the venkatachala commission recommendations right. were, should have been accepted they, are, right. they were they were accepted a bill was passed in 2003 but but unfortunately that bill lapsed not not because of there was opposition but because the elections were called that's the only reason in your autobiography you have also written about how such arbitrary transfers was something that was happening at the time of the emergency that's oh yes the emergency was terrible yes so when it much comes worse. it was much worse the emergency can't compare people compare what the present state of affairs with the emergency i don't agree at all right. the emergency was something much worse and i know i lived through the emergency right. i resigned during the emergency right. so i i know exactly how the emergency worked and it was something atrocious much 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 worse but yeah. when it comes to the aspect of judicial appointments yeah. do you think yeah. the supreme court judges the collegium the five judges to decide this have now by not recommending justice murli dhar have uh, subscribed to the government's point of view and they are not standing it up it so it appears hmm. uh, we, we can't say definitely because nobody knows why why what, what we are not party to the confabulations that took place hmm. so it's for them to whether to assert it or not assert hmm. so quite, quite frankly i don't agree with the title of the of my article also hmm. because that was put in by the editor hmm. but in any case that as to that the 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 question for the supreme court to answer they don't have to answer anybody i right. quite agree they right. don't have to answer but we have we have the right to say something about it but they also have to answer their own conscience at the end of the yeah, day that's correct and somebody has to say something but nobody is saying something hmm. that's the problem and here's a person and th- this could happen again and again hmm. it has happened once before hmm. as i said uh, the other day Justice Pence right. was a very distinguished judge of the Bombay High Court. He later went to as Chief Justice of Karnataka. Hmm. He was just not brought up, hmm. and there is no explanation why he was not brought up. He was an outstanding judge. Right. He cleared the lot of arrears in the Bombay High Court, hmm. tremendous, and he was a man fit to become. And by by all accounts, by, that sort of there is a consensus of by, by everybody. 
Right. And, and uh, had a very good brain and a very good uh, grasp of the subject, but somehow he didn't turn up. The Collegium had also recommended Justice Murli Dhar's name to be the Chief Justice of the Madras High Court, which is one of the most respected high courts in the country. Uh, the original three chartered high courts of India. Absolutely. Yeah. And they had even reiterated his name, but the government never acted on it, and the Collegium did nothing. No, no, they did not. They they, they withdrew it. They withdrew it. Right. Which was that? If Correct. they done done nothing, I would. Right. Because then it was uh, beyond their control, but they, they withdrew it. it. And we have no explanation of why they withdrew it. That was unfortunate, most unfortunate. That's all I can say. But what does this tell you about the state of the judiciary in the country? No, no, and it, doesn't, the it doesn't tell you anything about the state of the judiciary. The state of the judiciary is healthy hmm. and it's good. And no, I don't want people. No, no, I don't want people around who's listening to this hmm. to go away with the idea that the state of the judiciary is something to be uh, desired. Hmm. No, hmm. on the contrary, hmm. they deliver judgments, they give a, a verdicts against the government, right. they give verdicts for the government. It depends on what the law is. Hmm. They have to decide. They are the final arbiter hmm. of what is constitutional, what is the law, and what is correct. Hmm. And that that we have to accept. Hmm. So therefore, we have to accept this. We have to accept this. But the problem today is that unlike a judgment in a case, we don't have any reason why this person, <coughs> who is otherwise of outstanding ability, was, was, was uh, and recommended as Chief Justice of one of the ch three chartered high courts of British India, Madras, it was suddenly withdrawn. Why was it withdrawn? Nobody quite. I knows. think you had said that judges are very good at writing judgments, but not at appointing judges. That's a, that's the problem. That's that that seems to be the position. Right. And therefore, perhaps it should go to another body hmm. where the judges, of course, are in major, majority, like the Venkatachala uh, Justice Chief Justice Venkatachala had suggested, hmm. and which was actually accepted by the BJP government itself. A bill was introduced hmm. that there should be five persons in that commission, three judges of Supreme, uh, senior judges of the Supreme Court, the law minister, uh, there has to be an outsider, right. law minister and one outsider, person, total yeah. outsider, who is a very ex an expert. Right. Now, therefore, but the majority had to be with the judiciary. Do you, but unfortunately, that has not been followed. Do you think there's an urgent need to revamp how the process of judicial appointment yes, absolutely, exists absolutely. in the country? And, and particularly transfers. Right. You see, our constitution and Article 222 provides that High Court judges, Supreme mm. Court judges can't be transferred mm. because there's nowhere to, to go. Mm. But the High Court judges can be transferred from one High Court to another. Mm. And we've had the spectacle mm. may, some years ago of a Chief Justice of the Madras High Court being transferred to a Sikkim High right. Court where yes. there are only three judges. Yes. Which, which sounds absurd. Yes. And to me, at least, it sounds very shocking that this happened. But it did happen. Yes. That and, is the unfortunate. And you've specially spoken about in your book the need to disband this collegium, the five judges. Yes, 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 yes. I, I agree. The because, judicial appointment. You see, there's nothing great about the five. Uh, why shouldn't it be the whole court? Right. The entire Supreme Court, yeah, the, the man who's six and seven and eight and nine, right. uh, may, may have some more, better input. Right. But unfortunately, since you create this uh, this position of five or three or whatever it is, you exclude all the others, right. which, which should never be. It should be the whole court. I mean, roughly speaking, the whole court. Right. Therefore, the Chief Justice has to take his colleagues into uh, consultation and then roughly come to a consensus because they can't be uh, uh, unanimous every time. It has to be a consensus. So what do you think has changed over time? Because uh, earlier the judges... Human nature has changed. Human right. beings have changed. Hmm. <laughs> you can see it all, all over. In my life, in my 75 years at the bar, hmm. I, I see a tremendous change. Hmm. No, I ask you because... You Technology has changed. Everything absolutely. has changed. Everything has no, changed. I ask you because you've spoken extensively about how former judges used to actively consult, not just other judges, but even senior lawyers. Oh, yes, you I've have been consulted. Multi yes. Multiple times you have recommended yes, names. Yes, yes, correct. Judges have gone through Justice Eradi, like we were talking yes, about, correct, of the correct, Kerala correct, High Court. Correct, correct. Got appointed to the Supreme Court yes. because you had seen him in the Kerala yes, High Court correct. and spoken to the Supreme Court judges. In fact, I, I must tell you hmm. that if you want a precedent, there was one Chief Justice hmm. who 
because Venu Gopal and I hmm. had objected to the transfer of a particular High Court judge from Delhi hmm. to Madras. Hmm. And we had written about it and told the Chief Justice. And since we had objected, the Chief Justice, along with three colleagues of his, specially interviewed us and wanted to know what, why, 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 we, why we were objecting. Hmm. And we went and told him. Hmm. And ultimately, ultimately, that gentleman who was transferred did go, but then he was brought back to Delhi. So, so you see, these, these things do work. Right. They do work. At times. So are we hoping that through this question that you didn't mean to ask to the Supreme Court, but you've asked, do you think we are expecting for anything on the ground to really change? I don't know. You have to ask the judges. You don't ask me. I don't but know. are you expecting a response? No. I, I don't think so. I don't think there will be any response. But there, should, there has to be a, a, a lively discussion and a debate about it. Hmm. Not, not about this particular individual. Now hmm. they, they, it's gone beyond... Uh, uh, Beyond repair, as hmm. it were. Hmm. So the the man is retired. Retired is already nobody uh, takes back a retired judge. Correct. But 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 these things, uh, you see, leave a bad taste in the mouth right. uh, unless one knows what what happened. Right. And that's why I I I I, I, I have taken this uh, up. Not, not only because I know this gentleman, he's an out man of great integrity. Also, there's there not not a whisper about him. There's not one man who said. That he is a nasty fellow. He talks too much or any such thing. Not at all. I mean, on the contrary. And that that that's what's upset me. Who is to be held responsible? Is it both the sides? Yes, both the sides. Yes, both Are they sides. equally responsible? Yeah, I think so. I, I think the system is responsible. Right. The system is responsible. We have, we have to dig a little more hmm. to find out a better system hmm. because as you know the UN UN general principles have left it to the constitution hmm. you decide according to your own constitution but take men of, and women of integrity and take men and women of capacity and competent hmm. that, that's all that is required and, and that's, that has been happening as a general rule but there are exceptions and this is the, one of those outstanding exceptions right. about which we have to I mean, sound the bugle and right. the drum and so on. Absolutely. <laughs> so, what would your advice be for to be for a change to be brought in the system, so that all of these discrepancies can be done away with? Any kind. But in of the first place, we should have a commission. Right. That that's basic. With that the majority commission judges. should have. Yes. That commission should have also have. But but there should also be a meaningful consultation amongst judges themselves. Hmm. You see, the fact that you have five people or three people or seven people doesn't mean you exclude all the others. Hmm. There, there may be a, the fifth man or the seventh man or the last man who is appointed on the bench will be able, might be able to say something about, if, if only he's asked, why should he stick his neck out? Do you think the current collegium has closed itself off to yes, outside? Yeah, abso absolutely, because it's opinion? meant to be structured like that. Right. That is the unfortunate part. Hmm. That's how it's structured. Hmm. You can't blame it. You see, it was originally three. By another bench judgment of nine, it later, which it was quite unnecessary, of course, as I have already said. But whatever the reason, there is now of the five. And now there's also a sixth judge, because if none of the others will become chief justices, then the per next person to become right. chief justice is also be a member. Correct. So they have widened the... the, 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 the the, the group hmm. which decides. Hmm. But, but I think it should be much wider. Even if you have the collegium system, it should be much wider. The for Chief Justice should ask all his colleagues. For a little bit in the beginning of the year, uh, it seemed like the collegium is trying to take steps towards transparency. The kind of resolutions that we saw uh, actually had reasons for why a judge was see, recommended. This, this, also, or, this also has a, has a very bad... Uh, connotation. Hmm. Uh, you see, five out of 30 or 32, hmm. which means as if the five are superior. Hmm. In fact, at one time, not, uh, not in the currency of the present Chief Justice, but about three or four Chief Justices before, hmm. I know that when our Chief Justice came in, he had five separate chairs put for tea time for the five judges, and only it was for those five judges who sat on those high chairs. Really? Hmm. It's really absurd. It's ridiculous. They're all equal. Hmm. All the judges of the Supreme Court, 1 to 34, they're all equal. Hmm. I, have no, I have no doubt about it. 
I mean, the fact that they have come up to the highest court must make them all equal. Absolutely. Yeah. So they should be treated equally, including consultation. I'm now on the system. Keep the system. All right. But consult everybody. Right. See that everybody is asked also, not merely the first five. Why, why should the first five only tell you well, whether, whether Mr. X should be brought or should not be brought? Correct. To what extent do you think politics has a role to play in this? No, you not see, just... yeah, there's, politics has a role in, in every decision. Please hmm. remember, hmm. the highest court is dealing with politics. Hmm. What do you think is this Kashmir case which is going on before the Supreme Court, a constitution bench of the Supreme hmm. Court just now? Hmm. Oh, what is it about except politics? Hmm. So the, the judges have to decide, hmm. but they don't decide on politics. Hmm. They will have to decide on constitution. Correct. Is it constitutional what has been done or is it unconstitutional? If it's constitutional, it must be affirmed. If it's unconstitutional, it has to be struck down. That does all. Hmm. So, so don't, I mean, let's not mix it up with, say, politics. We are all, we are all have to live with politics. Right. You can't divorce yourself with politics. You can't say, I, I won't look at anything which is political. But uh, the whole, all cases, the, most of the cases who come up are political. Correct. But, they, but they, the, it's not that the judges decide politically. No. They decide in accordance with what they believe to be the position in law and the constitution. But in Justice Pensey's case that you yes. referred to, there was a certain level of politics amongst judges that came at Are that politics amongst judges in that loose sense? Yes, perhaps yes. Hmm. Perhaps yes. Perhaps yes. Perhaps yes. So do you think it's a similar case in Justice Pensey's case? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't speculate at all. Right. I, I think this man was a good, outstanding example of a person who ought to have been brought and who unfortunately, even in the opinion of the, judge, of the collegium themselves, he was outstanding, otherwise he wouldn't have Absolutely. been recommended as Chief Justice Correct. of Madras High Court. Right. Do you think there was injustice to Justice Murlidhar by not bringing him to the Supreme Court, in letting an, him retire? In an individual case, case, yes. Yes, certainly. Yes, certainly. It was an injustice. In my, in my humble opinion, and unless I, um, somebody tells me that, no, you are wrong because of X, Y, and Z, but I don't know the X, Y, and Z. Right. So, well, all we can do is hope that the judges are listening. Yes, I have no doubt. Oh, no, it doesn't matter whether the judges listen or not. But uh, we, the, the, the intelligent public, the people who count, etc., in the country, must uh, wake up to this and come to some sort of conclusion which is acceptable to all. Right. So, there you have it, uh, Mr. Fali Nariman. In absolutely clear terms, important questions need to be asked. And there is a serious requirement for a complete overhaul of how judges are appointed in India. Thank you so much, sir, for taking no, the time you. out thank and you. speaking to yeah. India today. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Thank you.